So if you've got a Mac, there's a good chance that you're getting into Apple intelligence and that for a long time you've been using dictation to get out your thoughts. And I'm here to tell you, I like to do that as well. There's many instances where I like to voice something either using AI like uh, advanced voice mode in a certain LLM or something, or just straight up old school dictation where you hit the microphone button and you type out a text for somebody or something into the search field or whatever. Like it's very useful. I've been doing that for years. You probably have too. But I have to tell you, one of the best upgrades, if you're into that, if it's a way that you like to input stuff, is to go with Whisper on your Mac. Now, Whisper is something that will do voice to text, but it's open source, it's AI driven. And here's the thing, it does a lot better job. It's more accurate than Apple's built-in dictation features most of the time. Now, what's the caveat? You actually have to have pretty powerful specs, some really hefty Apple Silicon to actually make a good go of any AI related software, whether it's free or not, that runs locally on your Mac, including Whisper. So we got a post here from Alex, uh, who's talking about the best reason for maxing out all your Apple laptop specs is for running Whisper. These days, he rarely types anything, he just narrates it. There's a ton of different ways to do this, uh, and it doesn't have to be just on your Mac. You can do superwhisper.com if you wanna check that out, and it'll help you write, quote unquote, three times faster without lifting, lifting a finger. What's cool here is it's offline. That's obviously cool. You can also throw in a custom vocabulary. That's like a huge upgrade. So certain phrases, names, links, or acronyms, you can make sure that those register without having to go back and retype. And honestly, I don't need to go through and give you a bunch of different apps and websites and stuff that you can check out because you can just do a search, whisper for Mac, whisper for iPhone, whatever it is, and you'll come up with all kinds of stuff because people are all over this. But if you haven't tried it out yet, it's worth digging into. I gotta tell you, number one, the speed. Number two, the privacy. Like Apple is always talking about privacy, but if you just wanna up your privacy game a little bit, go local with your AI models, and that'll be a big upgrade for sure. Super useful though, whether you're doing notes, um, whether you're doing email, whether you're doing coding actually, it can be really cool for that as well. Continually though, Apple's AI efforts pay off for AI stuff that isn't just Apple related. If you're watching this video and you haven't pre-ordered my course, AI and I, which helps you understand the opportunities and the threats that AI brings to the future and maybe to your job, then you need to pre-order it while it's still on sale. It's linked up down below. So I've brought this up many times before, but if you use a local LLM on your iPhone, you can go, I think a good one that you could check out is called Private LLM and it'll just heat your iPhone up almost instantly. Like if you thought a game would heat up your iPhone and that would be the craziest application that you could possibly load up on your iPhone, give a local LLM a try, right? <laughs> I've never seen the iPhone heat up quite so quickly. And it's just, it's such a intense task for a local machine to not have to rely on some server out in you know, who knows where, but to actually have to handle that work locally that most computers can't do it. If you go and use like an Intel based Mac from back in the day, good luck, right? Um, and even a lot of the stuff that you can get on Hugging Face, a lot of those models that you can download and play with, whether it's you know uh, just regular old LLM stuff or if it's some other sort of generative AI, maybe text to image, then there's some stuff that even very capable recent Macs are not gonna be able to handle, right? Um, it gets pretty out of control pretty quickly. And this is when you start seeing people string together maybe several of the new Mac minis to kind of create a little cluster uh, because number one, for the cost, it's pretty efficient. But number two, um, the Apple machines are just so capable. If you look online at people that are actually using this, um, it's easy to be like, well, is this even a big deal? But, but look at the comments. Um, people are getting really into it and there's a reason. If you like being productive and if you find yourself doing long form typing or, or content brainstorming sessions, or if you're in a meeting or something where there's a lot of uh, stuff being spoken, then this is just a really cool upgrade. And it's cool to be able to do it yourself. There's like a tinkering aspect to this as well. It's fun to be able to just uh, have something that you pay for and it works, but it's not cool for your wallet, right? So uh, if you just kind of want a fun project, or if you want to save a little bit of money, or you just want to see what your machine is capable of and really sort of push the limits, then this is something fun to get into. You should get into open source AI, 
see what's available at Hugging Face and just do a search. Start here. This is an easy way to get involved for like Mac Whisper uh, or iPhone Whisper. Visit the site that I gave you and just have some fun. And I want to know, are you already using this? Um, have you integrated it into your workflow? Uh, is it something that you rely on? If not, why not? Were you unaware of it? Um, is this still kind of new to you? Does it seem like too much work? Uh, let me know down in the comments. I'd be curious to see where you're at on all this. Hey, you know, if you don't know about my newsletter, it's free. It comes out on Fridays. It doesn't waste your time, but it fills you in on everything worth knowing about Apple and the tech world, including AI stuff. 